Donald Trump, it appears to be goading uh, the Democrats into impeaching him um, by, you know, uh, not um, not performing, not not just uh, all the things he's done that are problematic as president, but uh, preventing Congress from performing its oversight. And from Trump's perspective, he may very well be uh, goading the Democrats into it. He may think it might be to his advantage. You've pointed out a number of things that that make the analogy to Bill Clinton uh, inoperative, ranging from the fact that Clinton was already somewhat popular, ranging from the fact that uh, Clinton, uh, the the issues with impeachment were already very trivial, uh, ranging from uh, Clinton being able to work contemporaneously with Republicans during that because he's not uh, you didn't have the emotional maturity of a six year old. And so uh, wasn't going to go scream to high heaven about it constantly. But the other thing is that I think, you know, that Nancy Pelosi up till now, and we could get to why I say now, has not been uh, taking into account is there was no cost associated for Republicans at that time. We're talking about 1996, 97, 98 with not attempting to impeach or I should say impeaching um, uh, Clinton. And I should make it clear. I, I, I'm we're talking about this with full knowledge that the Senate, it would not convict. Maybe they would, but, but I think you have to assume if you're going to assume anything that they won't, there's a real cost. It seems to me for Democrats to not impeach Donald Trump, or at the very least start the process I mean, uh, let's talk about that for a moment. Well, I agree with you completely. First of all, let's look at the myth that the Republicans paid for for their impeachment of Clinton. They really didn't. They lost some ha- some seats in the 98 election, but they didn't lose their majority. And in 2000, we all know what happened. I mean, George W. Bush became president. So that, you know, the idea that they're sitting around worried that, oh, you know, golly, you know, we we really we don't want that to happen to us is kind of ridiculous. And and the, the, it's it's overblown that there was a great price to be paid by the Republicans. I would say I would say that even underestimates um, the advantages that Republicans got because Democrats lost a lot of elections in states and, uh, you know, the more local elections. Um, The uh, um, uh, um, Al Gore elevated Joe Lieberman to the heights, uh, you know, made him vice presidential nominee because he was the big scold in the Senate. Um, uh, of Bill Clinton uh, during the impeachment process. And uh, Joe Lieberman went on to basically, I mean, you know, you could blame Joe Lieberman right now for uh, why we don't have a Medicare buy-in at age 55, for gosh sakes. I mean, if there would have been somebody else in there, uh, you know, uh, at that time, a non-Joe Lieberman type, uh, we would be much better off. And Joe Lieberman was elevated because of, of impeachment. So there's a lot of, uh, of benefits that accrued to the Republicans, and there was no downside to not doing it. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, look, George W. Bush's motto when he ran in 2000 was, I'm going to restore honor and dignity to the White House. I mean, and this ushered in a new sort of, you know, tidal wave of moralizing. And you remember when Republicans yeah. used to care about that? And they, you know, the, everything was about religion and, you know, and that, and that, you know, that gave all this power to the, to the far right that they used very effectively during the, during the first decade of the new century and, and under George W. Bush. This, you know, this is a, it's a myth that the Democrats have something to fear. And as you point out, it's not just that they don't have anything to fear. It's that they the, they do have something to fear from their own base. Democrats are not in a mood for this, this idea of playing it safe. And let's all, you know, I mean, Pelosi's been out there. She and her people have been out there talking, well, you know, in fact, one of them, the, uh, the deputy vice chair of the Democratic caucus, went on TV and said that all this talk about oversight and impeachment impeachment was was a distraction from what people really care about you know and this i just that enrages me because i think people do care about their country i think they care about the fact that we have a, you know basically a criminal in the white house and they want this stuff aired out and i don't think i'm alone in that when you hear even joe biden's crowd the biggest crowd the biggest cheer he gets on there is when he says you know we have got to stop donald trump now i 
agree, and we don't have to even debate this, that <laughs> Biden's probably the last one to be, you know, looked to for, gui- for leadership on this. But nonetheless, even he gets that kind of response from audiences. So, you know, yes, people care about issues and they care about their personal lives, but they also care about the country. And I think it's really insulting to say that Democrats are not, you know, desperately concerned with what's going on in Washington with Donald Trump and the crimes that he's committed. I agree with you. And uh, this has been, you know, to the extent that uh, Democrats do, they do so despite the fact that the leadership of their party, Nancy Pelosi and uh, Chuck Schumer, have been poo-pooing it for months and months and months. Exactly. And so, all right. But with that said, I want to take a break. I want you to join me in the next hour if you can. Because I think there has been a uh, a bit of a change in the rhetoric that Nancy Pelosi has been yeah. using, which suggests to me that we're on to Plan B, that the facts on the ground and the political pressure has caught up to uh, her position, and we're about to see a change. And I think part of it was also a function of what we saw this week with Steve Mnuchin, with Ben Carson, uh, and uh, with uh, Bill Barr. We've got to take a break. We'll be back with more Ring of Fire. Digby will join me in the next hour.